Auto loan defaults are at a 10-year high. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with Amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. What did we tell our viewers to do over the last year and a half, Liz? Stay out of dealerships. Yes, run away from these greedy monsters. Instead, far too many foolish car buyers went out in droves to support dealers charging ridiculous prices for the cars, and they paid those prices. Ah. Now, we have record levels of defaulted loans and repos happening. I've seen plenty of reports that cars are actually showing up at the auto auctions, still having the paper temporary dealer-issued license plates taped in the back window. Wow. Ouch. So some of these repos happen that fast? Yes, many were just you know 30 or 90 days down the road and they were already defaulting. It's insane. Can you imagine the thinking of these people? <laughs> That's called not thinking. Ugh. With prices rising and real wages falling, many Americans are struggling to make ends meet. Unfortunately, they are increasingly turning to credit cards and other debt to fill the gap. But that creates other problems too. Debt has to be repaid, and a growing number of Americans are struggling to keep up with all forms of payments. Auto loan delinquencies have risen to the highest level in over 10 years, according to TransUnion. People are destroying their credit and heading into the terrible economy we have ahead of us. They're already being handicapped. TransUnion tracks more than 81 million auto loans in the United States. According to the Consumer Credit Reporting Agency, 1.65% of auto loans were at least 60 days delinquent in the third quarter. That's the highest rate for 60 day plus delinquencies in more than a decade. TransUnion Senior Vice President Satyan Merchant told CNBC that inflation was making it difficult for people to keep up with their car payments. Yes, and inflation is making it difficult to feed the family too, let alone make a car payment. Yeah. You see why we highly recommended being a cash buyer? Say what you want about it, but it's wonderful not having a car payment, especially when the economy is tanking. Consumers still want to stay current as best as they can. It's just that this inflationary environment is making it more challenging. It leaves fewer dollars in their pocket to make the auto loan payment because as Kevin said, they've got to pay more for eggs and milk and other necessary things. Not surprisingly, subprime borrowers, already the most challenged to start with, are having the most difficulty keeping up with their payments and subsequently going from bad to even worse credit. With loan accommodation programs that were implemented during the pandemic, some borrowers managed to avoid delinquency, but only temporarily. And those programs have ended and delinquencies have spiked. Quite obviously, these programs only serve to push some delinquencies into the future. According to TransUnion, 200,000 borrowers who took advantage of the pandemic era auto loan accommodation programs are now listed as 60 days delinquent. Like mortgage rates, auto loan rates have increased significantly since the Fed started pushing up rates to battle inflation. The average interest rate on new vehicle loans rose to 5.2% in quarter three. Interest rates on used vehicle loans averaged 9.7%. That's unreal. Yeah. Combined with the rising cost of both new and used vehicles, along with rising fuel prices, the cost of owning a car continues to rise dramatically. It's financial suicide out there, folks. Stay home. <laughs> the coming rise in unemployment will create an even bigger jump in auto loan delinquencies. Everyone recognizes that if we get into a position where employment starts to be a challenge in the United States and unemployment increases, that is when the industry will really start to be concerned about consumers' ability to pay their auto loans. The Federal Reserve blew up an auto bubble with years of artificially low interest rates after the 2008 financial crisis. The air was coming out of that bubble as the Fed tightened interest rates in 2018. The Fed pivot in 2019 and then the return to 0% interest rates during the pandemic pumped air back into the deflating bubble. But with the Fed now tightening monetary policy once again, the air appears to be leaking out fast. This is just another example of how the combination of inflation, rising interest rates, and a deteriorating economy is negatively impacting average Americans. Hopefully, we'll see some kind of shift in policy in the not distant future. Although the president gave a single word response to the question, what will you change? The answer was nothing. Well, check it out for yourself. The say the country is heading into the wrong direction despite the results of last night. What in the next two years do you intend to do differently uh, to change people's uh, opinion of the direction of the country, particularly as you contemplate a run for president in 2024. Nothing, because they're just finding out what we're doing. Unbelievable. Unfortunately, the same negative dynamics are popping up in other sectors, including housing. This flashes warning signals that things in the economy could deteriorate very quickly in the near future 
as this deterioration compounds and snowballs. Bad news, snowballing and compounding. For now, American consumers are managing to limp along using credit and savings accumulated during the pandemic. The savings are quickly being depleted and debt has its limits. The bad news is that Americans have piled on another $25 billion in consumer debt and sadly, many continue to dig deeper into debt as they try to cope with rising prices using credit cards. Americans adding another $25 billion to their record levels of debt is just more bad news. We didn't make that up, folks. It's being reported by data collected by the Federal Reserve. Moving on to another subject, many of you requested that I show you what the spark plugs look like in my Ford F-150 since I've been burning the X caps in it for several months now. Recently, my truck threw a code indicating a bad ignition coil. Since my plugs are also getting older, I decided to replace them along with ignition coils at the same time. For any of you who own a Ford with the 5.4 liter V8, you're very much aware how high the risk is for breaking off a spark plug in these motors. Here's a great video on YouTube posted by Autorex titled, How to Replace Ford 5.4 Spark Plugs Without Breaking Them. It's a great video and I recommend you watch the video if you have this truck. Listen to how he introduces this engine. Well, today we have the achy breaky Ford 5.4 spark plugs to replace on your 2004-2008 Ford F-150 or Expedition, things like that, with the 5.4 Triton 3-valve. You might have heard the horror stories about how these plugs break off in the head when you remove them, and those horror stories are true. And I'm going to show you some ways... A word of truth right there, but the good news is I got all eight of my plugs out without breaking a single one of them. There's a very obvious reason why... Here's a picture of what a typical set of plugs look like coming out of a 5.4 liter V8. Here's what my plugs look like after months of burning the X-caps. A remarkable difference. So there you go, folks. The X-cap have not only boosted my fuel economy 22.3%, but they are maintaining my engine for me too. That's pretty cool. If you have questions about the X-cap and how it can boost the fuel economy in your vehicle or fleet of vehicles, email us at kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com or call text to 701-441-3399. We have a big customer database, so we know how to produce the best results, and we promise you a straight-up honest answer. Remember, there's no risk involved. It's an ironclad, 100% customer satisfaction guarantee. And yes, Kevin does often call people or answers the calls for those who try to reach us on our MPG line. At a minimum, you'll get a text response from us. That's right. And as an added bonus for those of you who sign on as an ISR, I will personally contact you directly and share my cell phone number with you, and you'll have unlimited direct help and advice from me or Liz on all your future car deals. How'd you like to have the two of us on speed dial when you set foot in a dealership? Right. That alone is worth its weight in gold. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. We welcome you to our family. And of course, please share our videos on social media Thanks everyone for coming back and to all of our faithful followers and to our team of ISRs out there, you guys rock. And a special thanks to everyone who has sent in their XCAP testimonials. You just heard Kevin remind you that our Ford F-150 saw a boost of 22.3% improvement in fuel economy and there's a ton of people seeing 20 or 21% gas mileage increases, very similar to our results. $300 million in fuel caps have been sold, you heard that right, $300 million. So there's a lot of satisfied customers out there. That's right. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go. You can't go. All the plants are gonna die.